How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shift again. Welcome back to Steink Zero and welcome back to what is going to be probably my favorite part, or at least one of the highlights of this entire experience. It also could be the worst. If parties in Steins Gate tell me anything, something dramatic is going to happen today. And whether or not it's going to be a fun thing, it's really up in the air, but I'm excited to see what happens. So, uh, Okabe is bringing Maho to the party as a agreement with Amadeus Kurisu. Uh, you know, because Kurisu is trying to play matchmaker, which apparently, you know, that's, that's fun. Uh, and then we also are ultimately trying to get Yuki and Daru and Suzaha all kind of together again. Like ultimately the party idea was to get Suzaha to smile, which she needs. It's her life's very depressing. <laughs> I feel so bad for her, but it sounds like Daru was finally able to get her to come to the party and so hopefully things go well. But like I said, last time we had a party was the celebration of the time leap machine, and that just went swimmingly. But hey, we don't have any fanciful technology at this party except for Amadeus, but she's not actually here, so it should be fine. Right? Right. You know, nothing could possibly go wrong. But anyway, let's just jump in and enjoy ourselves. Let's, like, let's wade and bask in the glory of all of the, the Santa outfits, which you already know are adorable. It's just, I can't wait. It's gonna be so fun. <laughs> <clears throat> The lab was filled with Santas, just like I'd heard on the phone. And all of them were wearing miniskirts. Oh no. <gasps> They're so oh, cute! Daddy. Oh, hello Yuki, jeez. Oh my gosh, actually, she, now she's got just the Santa hat. I, I, I kind of understand, like, it really emphasizes, like, the ears thing. But I liked Ferris more, like, her, like in the first one, without the giant hat, personally. But it, it's adorable, but it also it just feels way too... Big. Hey, good to see you, Yuki. Alright, yes, I forgot, this is also a thing. We have Fubuki here, who seems nice and sweet. Kaede. Kaede. That's right, is it Kaeda? Kaeda? Um, she could be the one person because like that's the thing like Kaida is not her real name I guess Fubuki's real name is in her real name too hmm Fubuki was getting those weird visions of Mary's death that's one of them one of the two I'm leaning towards the older one though because um I think she makes a little bit more sense age-wise because she's in college which I think feels more age-appropriate you can say she was supposed to be dropped from like at like eight or ten years old in 1989, which would be yeah like I, I think it's the older one, but we'll see we'll see. I could I could be jumping at shadows here. Oh, oh. The sight of so many girls in a small room like this, all wearing Santa mini skirts, starting to overwhelm me. It's a little and then there's a little go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was having trouble deciding where to look when Luca got staggered in front of me. Okabe san. <laughs> Save me! <laughs> I don't blame you, but he looks like a vampire now. Luca -ko. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, he's like, dude, what are you wearing, man? I didn't expect a Santa in black. And wasn't he exposing an awful lot of skin? It was really erotic. Oh, Okabe, you and your suppressed uh, homosexual feelings. <laughs> but I think it's only for him. B but he's a guy. Plus, he also had the whole dating and kind of falling in love escapade while Lukako was a girl in the Ultra Timeline. So that just in itself confused things. It's, it's confusing, and it's kind of a theme that we've shared with Mob Love, except Mob Love did the opposite, where it started out as like a cutesy kind of guy and then became a girl. And, like, had to alter the viewpoint that way. Of course, that was also kind of a permanent thingy. Because it was a whole different uh, Makoto. Anyway, back to what we're doing. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. Oh. No, no, no. Don't, stop. Oh. Stop. Oh, fetch. That is really cute. <laughs> stop being so cute like a goat. Gosh darn it. Oh. Look, I go. 
、なんていうか、お疲れ。I'm glad you survived. It must have been a hard being the only guy. I gave him a pat on the shoulder. He smiled, re relieved. Oh boy. Whoa! She definitely feels like she's changed. It doesn't feel like it's been like, because it's only been like a year or six months, something like that. She definitely looks a lot older. And hopefully, not a psychopath. I've got my eye on you. Nah. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> you're making people so happy. That's so cute. All of it's adorable. The biggest goal today was to get Suzuha to participate. And there was no exaggeration to say that that's why Mayuri held this party. Oh, yeah, I totally spaced that we brought them with both of us. I told them earlier that I was being uh, bringing Dr. Les uh, Leskin in and Maho. I brought the two of them inside. Leskinen. Hey, Dr. Leskinen. I, I feel like I was saying that right. Someone said I did it wrong. Maybe I'm just. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Let's get in. Merry Christmas! Yeah! <laughs> Mayuri, huh? <laughs> That's all the super suppressed. <sighs> and. Okay. He's freaking tall, I know. Arigato, cute na, ojo san. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
クリスマスには店員さんがサンタさんの格好をしていますよ。True. ゴミまとクリスマスだと性質はだいぶ違いますよね。Hmm. Or so you say. But basically, you want to dress the two of them up in Santa outfits, don't you? They're just justifying it. Oh no. I have a feeling she's gonna flat out refuse. The area was already going after her. Maho refused as forcefully as she could, but Dr. Leskinen was surprisingly interested. <laughs> He had been trying to put a triangle paper party hat. There they come. Yay. Mary was looking at her smartphone. It looked like Donna had pulled it off. Guess he really was Suzuha's dad. This meant we'd succeeded in our biggest objective, which meant it was on to the next mission. We'd all decided that we were going to surprise Suzuha. Suzuha didn't know that we were all waiting for her. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They're going to surprise the, the army veteran, tactically trained super soldier. This sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> This sounds like. The king, the king of bad ideas, right here. Someone's gonna get shot. <laughs> We each grabbed a noisemaker and got into position. Oh no. Dr. Leskin and Maho helped too. I guess they don't really realize it, do they? Like, she talks about the things that she went through, but they don't really know. Remember, she was hiding her body when she was worried that her mom was gonna see her scars. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this is an understandable mistake, but it's, it's not gonna go over well. Maho seemed unsure, but Dr. Leskinen was more than willing to participate. I like Dr. Leskinen. Like, I have a. I actually have. A, I feel like I've got a bit of a kinship with him. <laughs> I mean, he loves science, but he's also just, just typically just good at throwing himself into situations. He's not afraid to look foolish, and he just kind He loves. Like, he's obviously someone who enjoys, um, like, experience. He likes being. Like, I mean. He threw, he's been staying in Japan when he obviously wouldn't feel more at home back in his own laboratory, but he's here and staying here because he wants to experience the culture and he wants to like, like work with like what he's been doing. Like he has like auxiliary reasons like Okabe working with Amadeus and such, but like it's, it's clear that he literally is just wanting to do everything he can to kind of have new experiences. And it's definitely an attitude I have. There's like, I think I'm a lot less social than he is. <laughs> like,、um, I was actually just、uh, reflecting on like a, taking a vacation and like how, like, I would love to go travel just by myself. Like, there'd be times where I'd wish I had other people around me too, but like, there's definitely something special about being able to just go and do whatever you want. So, someday. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, kiss me. Yeah, this is gonna go bad. <laughs> Oh man, this is gonna go bad. Suzuha, you're gonna be good at it, can I? No, she won't. Suzuha, I'm not big, crystal, and I'm not gonna be able to do it. 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 That's an achievement. Oh man, that's heartbreaking. It's true, but. <laughs> And then we heard daughter's voice from outside the window in the alley below the building. Oh, it's gonna go so bad. Yosh, Nakai Hide Zoo. <laughs> Maybe it won't be so bad. I would be incredibly suspicious if someone was doing that. His voice was loud and unnaturally expository. Once he got below the lab, he was supposed to give up the signal. Everything was as going as planned. We all went shh at each other in the darkness. I could hear two sets of footsteps coming up the stairs. Everyone held their breath, waited. The timing was critical. But would she be able to figure it out before we acted? I hope so! I don't want anyone shot! <laughs> the room was filled with different smells, like the girls' perfume, the aroma of the food they'd made. Didn't Suzuha always notice these things more quickly than an ordinary person would? I started to get worried. 
And then I heard the sound of the front door opening. Oh. So, so you hear me? <laughs> the, the, the trailing voice acting it was great Daru you idiot your voice is shaking <laughs> I got even more nervous was it time yet? what was the signal? I felt like my hands were going to slip and trigger the noisemaker too early my palms were soaked with sweat I could tell Suzaha was taking off her shoes oh fat <sighs> buckle up please no one gets shot <laughs> Fire get the signal. Why? Second the lights went on, we'll activate our noisemakers. <laughs> and she's gonna dive! I could see she's off flinch for just an instant. Oh, but I couldn't follow what happened after that. Great. That's how fast she was. Oh, she dropped down, sprung off the floor, and leapt towards Yuki, who happened to be standing in front of her. She might have broken Yuki's jaw with the base of her palm before I could shout. I, well, I could shout at her to stop. <laughs> oh, fetch! Fortunately, Yuki had been surprised by Suzuha's sudden charge and slipped when she tried to step back. Because of this, Suzuha's palm barely missed Yuki's nose and sliced through the air. This was such a bad idea. <laughs> by the time I'd finally shouted, it was all over. Suzuha had grabbed Yuki before she fell down and was holding her up. Yuki, Suzuha, and the rest of us were too stunned to speak. That was close. If the timing was even, events had been even slightly different, Yuki could have been badly hurt. Yeah, fetch Jika. Idiots. But I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of understandable. They don't really understand. I mean, I honestly, ironic, not ironic, I guess, but it's like, I mean, Memorial Day, it's an American holiday where we remember people who have been in service both those who have fallen in the line of duty and those who have returned home but often are expected to just kind of jump back into normal life um that was yesterday so uh like I, it was on my mind a little bit and so it's kind of funny because this is a really good example of this is like like you want to help people who have to served in a military role or gone through very traumatic events you want them to feel like they can kind of be themselves. There's not much you can do, but just being yourself, inviting them out, doing things with them can really help. But you also need to understand that there are things that they're going to be reacting to. And you have to remember that comes from a primal place of desperation. If they've ever served in a tour where they were being shot at or having bombs surprisingly being blown up at their feet and such, like loud noises and gunshot-like sounds, even if they don't sound quite like that, often will put them into a high drive response because that's what they had to train themselves to react to and they had to react swiftly or else they could die diving for cover or jumping at an attacker before the weapon could be fully drawn these are critical life-saving skills in any combat zone and it can be difficult when you come home because there are normal everyday things that can trigger that response and it also can be hard because like just trying to recondition yourself it's partially not possible because of the traumatic events, they are like your brain ingrains such events in your mind and they're hard to remove. And because a part of them still worries that they could be attacked, like legitimately, because attacks still happen. It's in the news, it happens. And so they don't want to sacrifice those emotions, they don't want to sacrifice those reactions, but it can interfere with daily life. And when they have very bad diagnosable problems with this, it's PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's something we throw around a lot, sometimes trivialize, but you need to understand how real that can be. And this is a perfect example of what it is. In their eyes, it, seems, it can seem crazy and like absurd that she would respond by nearly killing people with her fists, but she's used to people trying to ambush her and gun her down it makes sense. Even if it's something that she hasn't had to deal with in years, those instincts have kept her alive and they're going to continue to keep her alive. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> She's screaming it. Everyone finally realized what happened and begun to panic. Yuki simply lay in Suzuha's arms, blinking her eyes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> 
<laughs> I think I had this image spoiled for me on accident. But now I have the context of who it is. It's so fucking... It's so freaking good. Oh, Ferris and Daru. I love Daru's face right there. He's just so... Just like, what? <laughs> Yeah, what are you doing, exactly? She all seemed to snap back to reality. She was looking around at everyone. I feel bad, but I hope this works out. She's like, what? Yeah. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Suzu so was looking around the room. Did she still not understand what was going on? Did she not realize it was a party since she'd never been to one before? The walls and ceiling were covered with wreaths and ribbons. There was a folding table filled with food, cakes, snacks, and drinks. Party? Yeah, well, she didn't know. Like, you can't get mad at Yuki. It was her idea. Like, she had no clue. If Ogabe maybe been more involved, he might have been able to think about think about it and like realize it. But I mean, it's, like, it's, again, it's one of those things where like, unless you like you know what it's like or have seen its effects, you'd never really think about it. Especially when you're doing something nice. Yuki backed away from Suzuha and started to bow apolog apologetically. すずは、えっとこれは何て言うか、サプライズってやつを演出してみたわけで、みんなケチで悪気があったりとかじゃなくて。うん。し、すずは。どうさ。兄さんも知ってたの?いや。うん。これ<笑><笑> ごめんね、すずさん。企画したのは毎日なの。だから、ゆきさんやだるくを怒らないで。怒るなら毎日にして。うん。嫌だな、マヨネーさん。私、そんなにいつも怒ってる。すずは <笑> みんなで飾り付けしたんだよ。<笑> Yeah, but it's for you! Oh man. Jamashiawarikarasa.もう兄さんってば気が利かないよな。こんなところに私がいても仕方ないじゃないか. Oh come on, you. そんなことないにゃん。一緒にやろうにゃ。パーティー。でも私こういうのしたことないし。楽しくご飯食べたりおしゃべりしたりするだけだよ。<笑><笑> Yeah, that really not hard. Just, just, just chill, eat some food, have some fun. Maybe he grabs Lisa's hot hand tightly to keep her from getting away. Ma, mayonnaise-san? Hola, Suzuha no seki mo chanto yoi dekiteru no da zu. Kedo, honto ni dou shitara ii no ka, atashi. Don't worry, man. Ii kara, suwaretsu no. Oh, how could you say no to those big, lovely eyes? Now you already have to drag Suzuha over to the seat next to me and force her to sit down. <sighs> now we're gonna do a king's game? That would be hilarious. Yay! Exactly. We didn't kill anyone. Yay! It's <laughs> a big surprise. We didn't kill anybody. Everybody started to applaud for Fubuki's signal. Dairo played some Christmas carols on the computer. The grim atmosphere that had begun to fill the room was banished and felt a little relieved. 
Or is the Dr. P? Everybody started to look at the various drinks on the table. Hora, Siza. Yeah. Siza still looked like she was feeling as though she didn't belong, so I poured her some non alcoholic champagne. I love that stuff. That stuff's awesome. <laughs> Oh, come on. You know what? The problem is, though, you've taken things way too seriously. It, it, it's tough, because like, I understand she has important stuff to do, and granted she does. She really does have important stuff to take care of, but... She's in an era of peace. She should enjoy it a little bit because it's not gonna stick around for long. Like she should be able to like have some dalliances. Morale's important and her morale's gotta be at rock bottom. The reason she came to this era, huh? Didn't have the right to say anything about that. I was the only reason she was stuck here, unable to fulfill her task. But even so. <laughs> すずはは考えすぎだっつーのだから Come on. Yep, yep. Excellent. Oh, speech, speech. Mary stood up flustered. As she stood, she bumped into Lukako, who was standing next to her. The two of them almost spilled their drinks. <sighs> Miri started to take a deep breath. Uh-huh. <laughs> I guess she doesn't even consider herself to be a normie. Ubuki <laughs> 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 whispered a little sad. Ubuki-chan, <laughs> Christmas date <gasps> Ooh. それはもう熱烈にだ、けじゃあ、ブキ。全員女の子の後輩だけどね。Oh. Uh, I guess if that's not the way you swing, that would be frustrating. えっと、うーんと。とにかくみんなが楽しんでくれれば、マユシーは嬉しいな。<laughs> All right. Maybe she gave a little bow and smiled to Suzaha. Suzaha answered with an expression that wasn't quite a smile. What? Like, why? <laughs> okay. Geez, she's so good at just putting people on the spot. Like, you do this. Why? I don't know because I felt like it. Okay. Okay, Maho stood up with a slight frown, but for a moment before she opened her mouth. Kyo とてもいいものだと。何か面白いこと言ってにゃ。フェレス。はい。面白いことにゃ。なえっと。そうみ、フェレス、you're crazy. 
Uh oh, she was totally losing it. It was worse than me had had been a moment ago. It was hard to believe I'd seen her interrupted in front of that huge crowd at ATF. Was she bad at ad libbing? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was adorable. And she's just qualified for it, uh, to be recruited for the Nyan Nyan to work as a freaking maid. <laughs> Maho's desperate attempt at something interesting was cute, but honestly a little embarrassing. <laughs> felt like watching a small, adorable animal. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, man. <laughs> Mahorin Nyan Nyan Parents and Vienna were the only ones who seemed really impressed. <laughs> 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 is that is that the protocol in Japan? Is that what you do when you don't know what to say? You just make a nya sound and just try and look cute? Is that is that how you get out of social situations? Hiya <laughs> Jo-san, <laughs> so, so, Oh man. Come by. Come by. Yay. <laughs> so well, that was a, that was well that was interesting, but heck, it's memorable. Everybody happily clicked their glasses together. Since that was the one who invited Maho to the party, I decided to cheer her up. Makes sense to me. Oh no. <laughs> Shut up, you. I hate myself. <laughs> oh no. Cool na cat datta ja nai ka. Now I can only think of cool cat, cool cat. That's that's a terrible insult, man. Maho nyan, it's gonna make queen de hatarai te kureru nyo. Oh no. There's <laughs> no. That's not helping. <laughs> Ferris and Dr. Lesky were both enjoying trying to make her feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. still had somber look on her face, but Mayuri and Yuki and Dagger forced her into a test. Yeah. Mary put a piece of quiche on the plate and gave it to Suzuha. When Suzuha took a bite, her expression began to shine. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Next, Miyuri offered a quiche to Maho and the professor. Maho san to Reski nen san mo, dozo! Arigato. Mmm, oishi! Koro wa oishi desu ne! Yay! Jaa, kochira mo dozo. Ebi gratan to, ato, fried chicken wa ethnic fu ni shite mimashita. Ethnic style fried chicken? What's that supposed to mean? Is that supposed to be like, like Southern style, like, like Southern United States style, or, or what? What, what, what earth do they mean ethnic? Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Yuki went around and offered everyone something to eat, but she couldn't bring herself to offer any to Suzuha. That's sad. Miyuri kept motioning for her to go over, but Yuki just kept fidgeting. Maybe she was thinking about it too much. But Suzuha kept devouring all the food that Miyuri and Yuki had prepared and gushing over each dish. The two of them had been practicing their cooking for about a month here in the lab. I guess it paid off. Yay! No, oh, you did fine. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> it doesn't feel like a compliment. Everyone laughed. Uh, then about an hour after we started eating. When she saw that everyone had eaten enough food, Fetish clapped her hands together loudly to draw everyone's attention. Oh, wow. Presents, even. I keep... I'm actually calling her. Oh, fair point. I thought she'd like the party, though. I literally didn't think it was going to let me. I was a little shocked. Oh, okay. Hi. Okay. Can I talk to... I can't... Like, everyone's here. So I can't, like, message anybody. And I can't call anybody because they're all freaking here, but... Still, like, I was a little shocked that it actually let me in color. <laughs> alright, alright, sure, Nomadeus, I won't talk to you today. Maho and the professor stopped at a don uh, donkey exote. Uh, what is that supposed to be? On their way from Waco City and spent just 10 minutes picking out presents. Waco City, I said, I said Waco City, no, it's Waco. It's an actual place. <laughs> it's a gonna be a white elephant. It's okay. Aww, I thought like everything. Oh. How could you buy a present when you didn't know the party was happening? Mary mimicked daughter's words as she pulled out two small wrapped parcels from her bag and put them on the table. They both had the same wrapping as the one Daru was holding. They must have bought them at the same place. Mayuri had already explained to me operation number two. Mayuri's plan for the evening was not only to make Suzaha smile, but to bring Yuki and Daru a little closer together. I'm sure Daru didn't know this part, though. Huh. So are they gonna rig this, or what? <laughs> so they just gather together everyone's presents and put little stickers with numbers on them. And then she lifted a bundle of disposable chopsticks up above her head. What you got your hands on? I knew King's game was coming up. That's always fun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Plus, I mean, how many people aren't single here? Like, is there anyone to like? You could kind of say Daru and Yuki are pseudo couple, but they're not. Suzuha just probably isn't interested at all. Dr. Leskin, is he married? I can't remember if he ever said he was. Weird. Interesting. <laughs> I'm sure you do, Daru. Kasuda-san, <laughs> Yeah, he is. ということで、マユシーがちょっと勘違いしちゃったこの割り箸を、くじ引き用に使わせてもらうにゃ。え、みんな、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょ
Dang it, dude. So it's kind of like a white elephant. Like it's like it's like a simplified one, but one they could rig. Oh yeah. Failures immediately pass out presents according to the numbers that everyone drew. Once the presents were handed out, everyone started to take off the wrapping paper. Whew. Uh oh. Nah, nah was the first player act when she gave me a very strange cry inside her box with a skull face. What? Oh man. It's a... <laughs> oh sure. I had no idea you'd gone to the goth side of the Oh I guess I shouldn't be surprised with the clip in his hair, but <laughs> like Oh Thank you! Look at you terrified her. I was feeling bad for Na, but when I took out my own present... Oh no. Oh no. The box had a cute design, and it was what looked like a see-through white veil. <laughs> the veil was decorated here and there with little pink ribbons. Oh no. This can't be a... Oh no. Oh no, were you ringing the presents too? <laughs> no! <laughs> oh no. I hope that uh, what is it a wedding veil or is it something even more scandalous? Oh no. Nothing! Mayuri heard her own name and came over. I know, I'm confused too. Oh fetch, are you serious? No. No, a type of lingerie worn by women notable for its wide hem that fluffs out. No, I know what that is. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's freaking bold that you would give that to anybody in public setting when people could have been yeah, yeah, that absolutely wasn't random. But fetch, man. Ugh. That's kind of creepy, Fubuki. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I pushed the baby doll lingerie back in the Fubuki's hands. <laughs> what, what did you get? Fubuki handed me her present in exchange. The wrapping and lid had already been removed, and I took a quick look inside. Sexy pink shorts and a pink pra. <laughs> it's not any better. <laughs> yep, there, I see through. <laughs> <laughs> what a good reaction. Fetch, <sighs> <sighs> what? It's with you girls. Okay, there's uh there's wingman and then there's freaking like wing enforcers. <laughs> They're gonna beat him up. They're like, you're going to ask Miri out, dang it. <laughs> oh, poor Miri. <laughs> Is that what you people think about? <laughs> What did you get her? Maybe I had drawn my present, perhaps because we were childhood friends? By the way, I chosen a huge chunk of chocolate in the shape of a gold bar. The kind of thing you find in donkey... something bargain bin. Aww. Well, it was random! Well, the hilarious party gifts can be because they're terrible. これはないわ。うん。え。ないわね。もう
The magazine said it was sure thing. Mayuri is precious and needs to be protected. <laughs> Buki and Kaid, uh, Kaida, Kaida. I can't say that right. I know. I haven't watched like the 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 Bunny Girl Senpai anime series, and like one of the characters that was mentioned like every episode had the same name. I can't ever say it right. So Kaida. It's Kaida. Kaida. And maybe that's what K. I was kept saying K. It's Kada. It's just it's just one of those ones where like the two sounds don't feel right in my mouth, and it's like I don't want to put them together. Kada. Kada. We're painting Mary's head. A half out of sympathy, half because she was cute. Well, somehow I ended up as the bad guy, even though he got lingerie twice. Yeah. Next time, I'll get to Ah, drum roll, please. <laughs> Let's see what this is. If you start to open her present. Hmm? <laughs> she took out a cute wooden music box. When she opened the lid, there was a little tiny figure that danced. Ooh. Interesting. I bet this is gonna send Suzaha through some flashbacks. The girls all seemed really impressed. But Lukako is a guy. It definitely looked like something a woman would enjoy receiving. With as many gifts as they were coming to this party, it might have been their perfect choice. Wait, maybe I should have brought something like that. Probably. But then I realized that the idea had never even occurred to me. Fast laid it on a little strong, aren't ya? Fetus, you're making it too obvious. <laughs> Uh, it's Buki. <laughs> gonna be like, what? <laughs> Daru reluctantly raised his hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a normal reaction. Daru <laughs> Nisan. Nice. Everyone except Mary and Ferris, who knew about it in advance, raised their voices in surprise. <laughs> あ、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私、私
I don't know if that's even supposed to be. I can't even say that. Is that a... I, I don't know. Lugico's present was a miniature remote-controlled helicopter that Dr. Leskinen had purchased. Nice, actually. And Dr. Leskinen had got a set of cute, 12 cute little crayons for Nye. Aww. Caesar's present was a pair of handmade gloves. Yuki had evidently made them herself. That's cool. Uh, so Su Suzuha got gloves from Yuki, which... Oh, wow, that's from her mom. Bitch! <laughs> She put them on looking happy, but maybe a little lonely, and smiled. Suzuha, you got the jun. Yeah. <laughs> Dara realized he'd been set, set up and he was clearly avoiding looking at her. Suzuha seemed to understand and patted him on the back, with a gentle expression on her face. Mm-hmm. And to Suzuha, you too, traitor! <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm even getting a little frustrated. Yeah, that is surprising, but I mean, hey, it happens. Su... Suka. So what's gonna happen? Yuki came back from the bathroom. She seemed to be having trouble walking straight. Oh, fetch. What did that freaking letter say? She sat back in her seat but began to nervously nibble on snacks at the table. And once in a while she would take a look at Daru. For now, the movie ticket plan seemed to be going well. I don't think so, but okay. Sorry too much. Could tip her off. I should probably pretend I didn't know anything. <gasps> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mayuri raised her voice when she saw the music box in Maho's hands. It was shaped like a deformed bear. <laughs> when you wound up the hands, the legs were jerked back and forth as it played a tune. That sounds lovely. It was a very different design than the one you kid received. こんな素敵なものをいただいてしまって。いいんですよ。どうぞどうぞ。どんな音聞きたい。いやいや、let's Let's see what this is. Oh, uh, took her hand off the winding key and the mechanical yet gentle sound that was unique to the music box began to play. I'll be familiar. Must be maybe it's based on a classical piece. Because it doesn't sound like a theme from the game. But it's very peaceful. Maybe I'm just crazy. But it's very predictable. It's very nice. The lively atmosphere of the lab was replaced with a feeling of calmness and peace. We listened quietly to the sound of the music box. Yeah. It does. 
そうかこの曲だ。Song that Yuki would sing? She t h o u g h t stood up and is suddenly remembering something. Yuki さん、ほら、覚えてない Uh, careful. Eh? Hi? Yuki was facing us so hard that she started to panic when Suzuha spoke to her. I was in the middle of the day. Yuki さんがここで歌ってたよね。Aww. ああ、そういえば。うん、確かにこの曲だよ。s u z a s e e m e d to be remembering something as her eyes narrowed. ねえ、まゆ姉さん。これ、なんていう曲うん、yeah. とねえ、これは。Nuri was about to speak and then. Oh no. Oh no, do something was gonna happen! Out of nowhere, the world twisted. Uh oh. I moaned in pain as an incredible sense of wrongness flooded through me. No. That's somebody else messing with time. The whole lab seemed to twist and fade, and the happy party I'd been experiencing wrapped and waved like a mirage. Warped and raved. This. It couldn't be, no! Somewhere far away, I heard something that sounded like a violent crash. I was just barely able to move my eyes in the direction it came from when I saw Fabuki falling to the floor as she knocked over her table. Kaida Kai and Ferris ran over to her, calling her name. Fabuki. Why Fabuki? But it all looked so blurred. Like I was watching a movie underwater, and everything was moving so slow. Fabuki's the one! She must be the one! She's experiencing it because she's gone through this before, and Susan has probably collapsed too. Their voices were getting further and further away. No matter how much I stretched out my hand, it reached no one and touched nothing. It was a terrible feeling, as if time and space were being torn apart, and even matter itself was losing subjectivity. This feeling. Even if I didn't want to remember it, I knew what this awful feeling was. I knew it far better than anyone ever wanted. This was. Reading Steiner. Oh, fetch. Wait, one? That was a one in front of that. What? No! The, the one meant that they'd left Steins Gate completely, right? No, 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 they're in the beta world line still. That's what it is. Oh, fetch. Oh, that's really bad. I think. Oh, I don't want to end here, but I think we have to. I'm not going to want to stop if I don't stop now. Fetch! Dang it! No, son of a freaking. Oh, man! I knew. I knew it. Something. You can't just have happy memories and fun moments, right? It just all has to fall apart. Fetch. What was. What is this one going to be? Somebody did something, and it's altering time. I wonder if the moment mattered. Because remember, like, time travel often has to be, in, like, it involves certain key moments. Could it have been when they, oh, wait a second. Okay. We've seen in the first game how... Little things can cause big changes, like a text message sent back in time, right? And while those changes could correct themselves if they weren't placed just right, the right one in the right time could. Now, maybe something else is interfering. I heard crashing sound. Maybe there's another time machine being sent back down. Maybe that could that explain that. But another theory that I could be working on here is. At the party. The plan was twofold make Suzaha smile and to improve relations between Yuki and Dara, right? The origin, origin of the plan to try and bring Daru and Yuki together is the understanding that they need to get married and have Suzaha, right? But because, they're, but because they're using knowledge from the future to try and arrange things in the past. If they hadn't already been arranged so, that could be interfering with the timeline. Maybe the letter has a b 
backfiring effect and maybe it's going to undo the future in a way maybe Suzaha will no longer exist maybe that's why we didn't hear anything about her in that scene if that's the case inadvertently remember how Suzaha was super worried about interacting with her mom right well there was two things that happened there the letter she goes into the room and she comes out she seems very disturbed in a way very awkward maybe it was too much maybe it was too heavy-handed maybe she realized you were being set up maybe there's something wrong there and then the song was reminded and they were asking what is the song the song could have also triggered something maybe yuki started to realize and also remember people could experience like ripples of reading steiner a little bit like people oh of course why didn't i think fubuki had was the time travel from the beginning because she was getting rumblings of other reading steiner cases i thought she just got that sickness whatever it was but no i'm sure it's just because she's a time traveler she's more sensitive anyway so Fubuki's the one, I'm pretty sure. But then, oh, and that could explain why she's so small. Because she had all that radiation exposure when she was a child. Anyway, um, so as the events transpired, the song possibly triggered, because it's such a strong memory for the two of them, maybe it triggered her mem memories of being married to Daru and having her and then eventually dying. And what is that? made her so afraid that she runs from that situation and the instant she knows about it she will no longer pursue that line of reasoning and that's what triggered the time the the, the reading steiner possibly i heard once again heard a crash i'm guessing there's something else going on like another like a time machine or something but that's something that could have been it because i mean throwing a party together and trying to force two people to go on a date who you think are supposed to get married in the future is a lot more of an interference than a simple text message but we've seen the text messages can cause changes in the timeline so what do we do what does this mean and what's going to happen we'll have to figure that out next week fetch man oh this was such a fun episode i loved every second of it but no of course not you know because we can't throw a party in the lab without something going horribly wrong so thank you so much for being here thank you so much for joining me on this adventure once again it's a pleasure to be talking about these things with you and to kind of share my thoughts and feelings i'm sure i'm way off on all those types of theories but it, it, you've got to admit using knowledge from the future to try and make something happen even if you think you're trying to work towards what you're working for the butterfly effect can often kick into play so who knows so and then the other question is who changed time who altered time if it wasn't the people at that party who on earth is messing with it it's got to be well, it's someone from the future maybe someone else is trying to stop the war i wouldn't be surprised seems like something you'd want to stop but it sounds like it's going to be a lot more destructive this time around. And the only thing that could be really interesting would be a second Suzuha <laughs> from a different version of the future. Oh, that could be fascinating. Like an old, oh, that'd be like an older Suzuha, like this Suzuha in the future who manages separately to make another time machine to come back to this moment to try and fix things that were <laughs> wrong the first time. Oh, that could be interesting, because then you'd have a Suzaha that was like like 20 years older, maybe? Or at least 10 years older? Ooh. We're getting some real deep types here. Like, what if we kept having a looping Suzaha, continually getting older and older? She kept trying to fix problems herself, since Okabe wouldn't. That could be terrible. Especially if they start having conflicting interests. Ooh, that could be very, very scary. Yeah, anyway. Lots of fun to think about. I'm going to be thinking about this one for all week. I'm excited for the next episode because this is where it's going to get real crazy. So, thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you so much for joining. And until the next video you're watching me, or we'll have to see me in next. I'll see you there.